Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. Stories start in many different ways. This one began with a stay of execution and ended with a doomed man finding salvation and the hunter becoming the hunted. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. There's an old bromide about nothing being deader than yesterday's news. But what about the people who made that news? The couple who were divorced, they've still got their tangled lives to live. The hit-and-run driver, he's still got his conscience to keep step with him wherever he walks. And the murderer on his way to the death house, his story is still with him. Even though yesterday's newsprint lines the inside of today's garbage cans and provides wrapping in the fish markets. There's another old bromide the best of us have a hard time learning. It has to do with taking things for granted. And I was the wide-eyed innocent in kindergarten, my education beginning a little past midnight as I stepped out into the deserted sidewalk in front of the newspaper building. All right, Stone. Huh? Don't turn around. Don't move. Well, if this is a stick-up, you're out of luck. Payday's tomorrow. It's John Galt, Mr. Stone. Galt? I said don't turn around. I escaped, Stone. I got away. Let's find your car. How did you escape? On the train, on the way to the death house. The guard got careless. That his gun? Yes. You kill him? No. It's probably an alarm out for you. Maybe they won't catch me before I do what I have to do. And what's that? I kept saying I was innocent, Mr. Stone. You kept saying I was guilty. The newspaper's a powerful thing. What I said, only a few people heard. What you said in your column, a million people heard. Come on, let's go. I work for a newspaper, Galt. We deal in facts. Facts like a jealous husband shooting an unarmed man in the back. Facts. When it's printed, people believe it. Even if it's a bunch of trumped-up lies. I didn't convict you, Galt. The evidence didn't. You helped. Here we are. Get in. You can drive. And no tricks. I've got nothing to lose. Nothing. Where are we going? To the assistant district attorney's home. He lives on Fowler between Oak and Euclid. What do you want with him, Galt? He's just a guy doing his job, and it's a tough one. He's figuring on getting married soon, planning on a nice, comfortable life. What's wrong with that? Why don't you ask my wife? Come on, get with me. The assistant district attorney, Philip Holmes. It conducted a brilliant prosecution of golf, developed an airtight case. And now Holmes was preparing to taste the fruits of victory. His fiancée, the girl he wanted to marry for a year, had finally set the date. The wedding was scheduled for next Sunday. And now this. I looked over at golf. His fingers clutched the gun like a child clutches her favorite doll. I'd have to wait, sweat it out for a while, find out what he was after, and pray for an opening. <laughs> Maybe he isn't home, Galt. Maybe he's still out with his fiancée. Shut up. Yes? Inside. Uh, what do you think? You... Get back in. You too, Stone. Galt. Oh, now, look here. Ready for bed, Mr. District Attorney? Oh, yes. I heard from the police about your escape. They're looking for you, Galt. Get dressed. What do you expect to accomplish? You can't. You better do as he says, Holmes. What is this, Randy? What are you doing here? I'm just along for the ride. This is his show. All right, answer it. Be careful what you say, Mr. D.A. Hello? Philip, I just heard it on the radio. John Gordon escaped. Yes. Oh, they called you. Yes. Darling, do be careful. He might come for you. He swore he'd get even with you. Oh, there's nothing to worry about, dear. Phil, he's crazy. He's... Say goodbye. What's that, Phil? Louise, I... He wouldn't come here, Louise. This would be the last place he'd come here. But you should have protection, Phil. Darling, if Hello, you call good the police, night. I could... Yes, it's all right. Good night, dear. Phil. Good night. Now get dressed. 
What do you want? I just told you. I want you to get dressed and hurry. Hurry? Like you hurried me through my trial. Get away from that drawer. I want you to get dressed. I just want a pair. I told you to get a... Don't break my hand, you... Now, now his back was to me concerned with Holmes, and for a moment he'd forgotten me. I had three fast steps to take, and then I grabbed his arm. Drop it. Drop that gun. Holmes, get the gun. No, no, you don't. I got it. I ought to shoot now. I ought to shoot both of you now. Get back, Stone. You can't blame me for trying, Gold. You're not acting very much like an innocent man. Yeah, what do you expect me to do? Go quietly to the death cell and wait for a miracle? Keep on waiting for it while they shave my head and slit my trousers? You should have thought of that before you got involved with a character like Cutler. You were given a fair trial, Gold. (laughs) Fair trial? It was a time I had a lot of respect for law and courts and justice, but not now. From here on in, I haven't got anything to lose. But you have, Holmes, and so have you, Stone. Try it again. Try another trick. If you miss a gun, I'll kill you. You'll kill us anyway, Gold, won't you? I know I can't escape. I know I'll be caught. But when they finally catch up to me, one second before they kill me, I'm going to kill you. And in the meantime? I'm going to show you things that never got into the court. Things that'll prove that I didn't kill Monty Cutler. Then your dying will be bitter and pointless like mine is. We'll see how you like it. Ready, Mr. D.A.? We'll use your car. The police respect it. Is this where you used to live, Gaul? That's right. Where I used to live. What's here? My wife. Wait. You sure this is how you want it, Gulp? Just don't try anything foolish. It's your play. John! Ev, you know Randy Stone, Evelyn... The one who wrote those stories about me, about us. You're still mixed up, Gold. I'm a reporter. I don't take sides. What is it, John? What happened? And the district attorney, Ev. John, what's wrong? Get in. Get in, both of you. You're an awfully determined host, Gold. Over there, where I can watch you. Why are you doing this, Gold? You can't do yourself any good, and you're only making things worse for your wife. Motive. You kept saying motive, Mr. D.A., Your whole case against me was built in what you said was my motive for killing Cutler. I heard everything you had to say in court. This isn't court now. There's no judge, no jury, just us. Ev, we've been in love for a long time, haven't we? Yes. Yes, John. Ev, you worked for Monty Cutler for years. Was there ever anything between you and him? No. No. I was never jealous of him. I had no reason. No. Was there any reason I'd want to kill him? No, no, John. I heard all this before. No matter what my wife says, Mr. D.A., I'm going to die tonight. I'm going to run, and they're going to catch me. This is the last time I'll see my wife. But you'll never live to have a wife. You're going to be running with me. You're going to know how it feels to be hunted... How it is to know that this is your last night to live. Go on, go. Ev, the night I called for you at Cutler's place, the night he was shot, you'd already gone home. You said you saw a woman there earlier. Yes, Mr. Cutler's wife. He hadn't been living with her. Not for years. Now, just a second. The police tried to find this wife. They never found any evidence he'd been married. No, he never was. We never found any supporting evidence that a woman was there the night of the murder. I asked for time. Why'd you rush the trial right through, Holmes? Maybe I could have found her. John. Yes. Yes, I've got to go. John, what's going to happen? Come on, you two. (laughs) Goodbye, Ed. Where now? Maybe some more evidence that never got into court. Keep your eye on the road, Stone. I'll tell you where to go. I 
I never heard a convicted killer say he wasn't framed or up on a bum rap or he never did it. I've heard it hundreds of times, and no matter how good they make it sound, they've always got an angle. And I'd find out what Galt's was before long, too. I kept driving downtown to the west side into the manufacturing district. Turn right at the cornerstone. Monty Cutler's place? No, across the street from Cutler's, the warehouse. And what's there? A missing witness. Maybe he's back in town now. Who is it? The night watchman. Come on. Out. He was there when I came to pick Evelyn up that night. I said hello to him. But nobody could find him during the trial. Seems like a silly waste of time to me. Time is all you have left, Holmes. You better keep hoping I manage to waste a lot of it before they close in on us. Hey, you fellas. What do you want there? Hold on there. What is it you want? What? Yeah. It's me, Charlie. Johnny Gold. And this is Randy Stone of the Star. And maybe you know our assistant district attorney, Mr. Holmes. What do you want? The answer to some questions, Charlie. What about? What for? About Monty Cutler's murder. And because you skipped town during my trial... I don't know what you're talking about. If you know anything, Charlie, tell us about it. What could I know? I... Why'd you leave town, Charlie? Uh, I went on my vacation. More than four weeks? Uh, yeah, sure. Who paid for your vacation? Nobody. What do you mean? Tell him what he wants to know, Charlie. Mr. District Attorney, I... Go ahead, Charlie. You want me to tell everything that happened that night, Mr. Holmes? Why not? What difference does it make? What difference? Well, maybe so. Uh, well, I said hello to you, Mr. Gold. You remember that? Sure. And before that... What? Well, before that... This woman come around. Which woman, Charlie? Well, I've been a watchman here a long time. I, I see her a few times, maybe five or six years ago. She used to come around that Cutler's time. wife. I don't know whether she was or not. How long before I got there, Charlie? Well, maybe a half hour, I guess. How long did she stay there? I don't know. And Mr. District Attorney, you sure you want me to spill this? Oh, yes. Yes, Charlie. There's no mystery, is there? Well, there was a car there, too. What car? Big limousine. Uh... Go on, Charlie. Which big limousine? The district attorney's car. My car? The DA's yeah. car. Yes, sir. Were you raiding Cutler's roulette wheel, Holmes? No, that's oh. it. That's it. That explains everything. You were there. That's why you refused me a delay to uncover the no, truth. No, no, don't jump to conclusions. How does it Bob? feel, Holmes? Why not jump to conclusions? You've been doing it a long time. It all falls into place, the whole pattern. You're rushing me through the trial, not giving me a chance. Piling up circumstantial evidence. Could it have been your car, Holmes? I don't know. Perhaps a lot of people have access to it. That'll be worth finding out about, Holmes. Yes. Yes, I'll look into it. Oh, yeah, I can just believe that. I can just see you putting your neck in a noose for me. Gawk, you said it before. A newspaper's a pretty powerful thing. With this evidence, we... You can... expect me to trust you after all those stories about how guilty I was? Well, this would make a better story. Sure, sure. The story of Randy Stone bringing in an escaped murderer would be swell for you. Look, you've established enough doubt so that we can... Ah, open... you'd say anything to save your skin. You'd promise anything. We'll save it for your readers. They believe what you say. The streets are honeycombed with police. How far do you expect to get? At least one more more place before they catch up. Where? Where to go? The woman, Mr. District Attorney. Cutler's wife. The one you said doesn't exist. But does it matter? Wherever we go, you'd better keep hoping nobody stops us. Us! Us! Because as soon as they do, it'll be the end of the line for all of us. <laughs> Well, Randy, you're a fast guy with an answer, so answer this one. Or are you looking for an angle? You've heard a hundred convicted killers say they're innocent. You're tired of listening. You know they're lying. But here's the hundred and first, Randy. Maybe he hasn't got any angle. Maybe he's telling the truth. And if he is, it makes sense for him to feel that there's no answer. And he's got to keep running with the cops and everybody waiting for him with guns and with cars. Because he can shout his lungs out and nobody will listen. He can yell and cry and scream that he's not guilty. 
And they'll still drag him down the long corridor and make him step over the next to last threshold. What would you do if you were him, Randy? And the DA's car, how does that figure? Galt wasn't taking any chances now. He forced Holmes and me to burrow into the well below the dashboard. He got behind the wheel, driving with one hand, his other hand gripping his gun. The DA's car was flush, but it wasn't designed to make a passenger comfortable, doubled up. I was subject to claustrophobia. There was never a better time for it to come out. Hang on. There's a barricade ahead. We're going through it. There'll be a fool gone. About the only thing I could see was the gas accelerator and Galt's foot. And suddenly the foot went way down, jamming the pedal against the floor. Here it comes. This is how it feels. I remember something about letting your body relax when you're heading for a smash-up. But how can you relax with your knee propped against your chin? I clipped my jaw tight and said a fast prayer. Like this, Stone, like this! NBC is bringing you Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. This Wednesday marks the return to the air of Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman in their popular roles as the Halls of Ivy. The delightful adventures of Professor Hall and his wife, Vicki, mean 30 minutes of top listening for the entire family. And on Wednesday, October 4th, that remarkable mustache that walks like a man, Groucho Marx, will be on NBC with his hilarious quiz game, You Bet Your Life. It's 30 minutes of fun and prizes. The biggest prize of all being Groucho, of course. And now back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. It wasn't particularly comfortable under the dashboard of the car, but it was a good place to be with bullets on the loose and an escaped murderer at the wheel. The car skidded and danced through the barricade and then gave a surge and swept on. How does it feel, you guys? How does it feel to be the fox for a change? Let us get out of here and I'll tell you. What's that? I don't know. Gas. They hit the gas tank. I'm out of gas. All right, get out. Now, wait. Hold on a minute. There's no sense in this, Galt. Get moving. I'm out of gas, but not out of bullets. Before you do something that can't be undone, Galt, think a minute. There'll be a real investigation. We'll go... we got to make... we got to make those woods. Holmes, what about it? If he's innocent, I'll we can... i give you my word, Come on. Go. Faster. They'll be here in a minute. Faster. Oh, listen... I thought I was being fair. The trial, I believe there wasn't any valid reason for a postponement. I've always conducted myself according to strict letter of the law. Now, now if I've made a mistake... Save it, Holmes. All right. Hold it. You get behind that tree, Holmes. Stone, behind that bush. It's not too dark for me to see you. One move and I shoot. We know you're there. Come out with your hands up. Two cops from the patrol car were sitting ducks with the moon behind them. They were coming slowly, their guns drawn. If Galt wanted to shoot, he couldn't have a better target. Stay back. Stay back. But they kept coming, not seeing any of us, straight for the bush behind which I stood. Mr. Holmes, are you there? Yes. Yes, don't shoot. Don't come any closer. I'm warning you. We're coming in. I said stay back. I'll shoot. Come on. Galt fired from less than 15 feet. If the shot hit one of them, it didn't stop him. They both came on. I counted one, two, and then the cop in front was close enough. I braced myself and I let him have it. Sometimes you have to do the darndest things to help a guy. My haymaker hurt the cop, but not as much as Galt's bullet would have. The other cop was on me now. I twisted, I rolled away. He sent a whistling blow past my ear. He was a heavy guy, real heavy as he landed on my kidney. And I tried to squirm away, and then suddenly... The cop's weight slid off my back. I turned and Galt's face, twisted and maniacal, looked down at me, his gun raised. Get up, Stone. You two homes are out cold. Cops will be swarming all over here in a few minutes. Wherever we go, they'll... Now you know how it is to be the hunted instead of the hunter. How long do you think we'll last in these woods? The freight yards are close by. I said, come on, both of you. Run! Come on, Run! <laughs> You can read about it, you can see it in the movie, but you never really know how it feels to be the quarry in an honest-to-death game of fox and hounds until you've had it. 
We were running, but there'd have to be a dead end, and soon. And that'd be the time that Galt, half crazy with bitterness and hate, had turned his gun on us to make sure that he took us with him. We made it to the freight yards, and Galt steered us to one of a long line of boxcars. Okay, here's an empty freight. Get in. In that corner. Sit down. Now, for a little while, I thought maybe you were innocent, Galt. Ask Holmes whether I am or not. Ask him what his car was doing to Monty Cutler's. Maybe he lost too much at the roulette wheel in the upstairs room. You didn't like it when they used that kind of thinking in court. When the cops came after us, what did Holmes do? He just stood there waiting. What did you expect me to do? Maybe what Stone did. He didn't just stand there hoping the cops would kill me like you were hoping. That would have fixed it up fine for you, wouldn't it, Holmes? You're all crossed up, Galt. But I helped knock them out because I didn't want them killed. They're coming, Galt. Galt, while you still have time. If you give yourself up, I'll make every effort to get at the truth. I know the truth. You killed Cutler. You talk about motive, Galt. What's my motive? Why would I kill him? There's something beyond that, too. A man neither has it in him to kill or he hasn't, Galt. When you shot at the cops back there, it proved something. I didn't shoot at them. How could I have missed them so close? I shot in the air to scare them off. You're going to scare them off now? They're pretty close. They'll be here next. All right, you tell me. It's up to both of you. When that door opens, I'm going to shoot. We'll find out who's the murderer. All right, Holmes. Tell me what to do. Shall I shoot them or you? Them or you? Listen, they're still away. You can hide. I'll tell them you ran away. They'll believe me. <laughs> you must think I'm an idiot. Well, Stone, you said a man is either a murderer or he isn't. How about you? Are you a murderer? They're hunting you now, too. They'll be here in a second. If I shoot, then we can still have a little time. How about it, Stone? You'll do what's in you to do, Galt. Quick. Holmes, quick. What'll it be? Oh, you crazy fool. I didn't kill Cutler. I swear to you, I didn't. All right. All right, come on out of there. The cop's flashlight played around. Galt got to his feet. I could see his gun raised, but he was standing stock still frozen. I jumped to my feet, but not as quickly as Holmes. Don't shoot! It's me, the district attorney. Galt, for heaven's sake. And then he stopped. And Galt still stood there. The cops moved in, their flashlight beamed steady on Galt's tortured face. I... And then the tenseness went out of his features. I... I... He turned to the district attorney, dropping his gun arm. I can't. I can't shoot. Maybe you did prove something, Galt, right now. What was your motive, Holmes? Doesn't matter now, does it? You gotta have a motive to kill somebody. It has to be a pretty good motive, too. Because even with what I have against you, I still can't kill you. Everything all right, Mr. Holmes? Yes. Yes. Okay, Galt. Come along. He didn't kill Monty Cutler. No. Uh, you didn't either. No. Nope. It was your car. I... No, I don't know. I suppose maybe it was. Galt wanted to take us to one more place, Holmes. Cutler's wife. Yeah, we'll have to find out where she lives. Yes, I... I'd like to stump off at Louisa's first, Randy. She's probably worried about me. It's close by. Sure, sure. <laughs> We drove back away with the patrol car, and then Holmes and I caught a cab. It was only a ten-minute drive to his fiancée's place. The D.A. was quiet, and I didn't feel like talking either. We were awful close to eternal silence back there in the freight car. Maybe that was in Holmes's mind, too. Or maybe he was thinking about the woman he was going to marry. A uniformed elevator operator took us up to the fourth floor. The swank apartment house was good for my jumping nerves after the rough night. Deep carpets and subdued lights everywhere, I began to feel myself unwinding. Darling. Oh, darling, thank heaven you're all right. Louise, this is Randy Stone. Oh, please come in. Thank you, thank you. Three in the morning is a pretty weird hour to come calling. 
I couldn't sleep anyhow. I've been glued to the radio. Must have been terrible for you. For both of you. Louise. Would, would you like some hot coffee? Louise. There was a moment when... Darling, you mustn't think about it anymore. I know it was horrible. Mr. Stone, wouldn't you like some coffee? Well, uh, no, 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 thank you. Promise to kill us, Louise. And there was that moment when he could have. What stopped him, Randy? I think it was because he wasn't sure you killed Cutler. Yes. Yes, he couldn't figure a motive for me. <laughs> Isn't that a peculiar little thing, Louise? Uh, let's not think about it anymore. If he'd known Bill. I did have a motive, if he'd known the woman I wanted to marry was Monty Cutler's wife, <gasps> he wouldn't have hesitated. The rest of the evidence was all there. Bill. He could have killed us. And he didn't. He's an honest man. Far more honest than I was. Because all along I kept pushing the thought out of my mind. I didn't want to let myself think that John Galt might not be guilty. Phil, it's all over now. It's finished. Louise, why didn't you tell me you were Cutler's wife? Because Cutler was a gambler and a racketeer. Phil, Mr. Stone is here. Uh, maybe I ought to let you handle this alone. No, no. Uh, oh, Randy, I want you to hear this. You see, it's understandable that we couldn't find Cutler's wife. Louise was out of town, weren't you, Louise? Phil. I'd loaned the car to you, Louise. You were using the car that night. I didn't know her girl would be there. I didn't want to implicate anybody. Kind of makes me an accomplice, doesn't it? No. No. I did it for us. You've got no pardon, and I did it. Because I love you, Phil. Randy? Uh, yeah, Holmes. Come with us. Down to headquarters. Yeah. yeah. I've got an apology to make down there, too. That old bromide that I was talking about, it's don't jump to conclusions. It's an easy habit to get into. At work, at home with the people we know and love. I got my education all over again with Johnny Galt, and I didn't learn with books. Playing for keeps is a tough way to learn, but maybe it lasts longer that way. I hope so. Copy boy. Hmm. Now where is that copy boy? Probably sneaking a beer at the corner. Oh, there I go, jumping at conclusions again. Uh, copy boy. <laughs> Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis and edited by Larry Marcus. Tonight's story was written by Celie Glester and Merwin Gerard, with music by Frank Worth. The part of Galt was played by Jeff Corey. Others in tonight's cast were Gene Bates, Francis Cheney, Eddie Fields, Hal Gerard, and John Stevenson. Frank Lovejoy will next be seen in Milton Sperling's production, Three Secrets, released by Warner Brothers. Listen next week at this time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. Night Beat came to you from Hollywood. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Fibber McGee and Molly and all their delightful guests at 79 Wistful Vista will be back on Tuesday, September 19th. Doc Gamble, Mayor Latrivia, and the entire cast will be on hand to join in the merriment. Two weeks after that, the happy chimes ring for the return of Bob Hope with laughs and more laughs in the unique Hope style. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.